In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Today's Chaplain's Report, we are continuing our series in the book of Samuel. And you may recall from the last Chaplain's Report that when we last left this little episode between Samuel and the children of Israel, they were begging him, begging him for a king. They didn't want judges anymore. They didn't like God's system. They didn't like the system that he had set up and that Moses had set up. And so they decide, you know what? Let's just have a king like every other country. That's what we really want. And they specifically cite Samuel's sons, which they had a legitimate gripe with. I mean, it wasn't as though the, the sons were doing their job and doing what they were supposed to. So this is not completely without merit. But they had a legitimate complaint with Samuel's sons. And so what they decided to do is say, hey, look, we can't do this anymore. Let's just go ahead, have a king like every other country, be just like them, and everything will be fine. And they keep calling for this, and so that's really where we pick up where we are here in Samuel, in 1 Samuel 8, verses 7 through 8, where it says, The Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in regard to all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king." Over them. Take all the deeds which they have done since the day that I have brought them uh, up from Egypt, even to this day, that they have forsaken me and served other gods, so they are doing also. I think one of the things that this verse illustrates is the reason why human beings should not have anywhere near this kind of power over another individual. The reason really goes back to human beings just can't be trusted with it. No human being should be king over another human being because a king essentially replaces God. Once someone has a king, then... In many ways, and I'm not saying that be every single person that lives in a monarchy is doomed to not have God as king over their life, but it makes it harder. That's the issue. You see, with a person that is able to be to freely make their own decisions, that is able to operate with a great degree of autonomy, then they have choice over who gets to be king over their life. Now, granted, most people do not choose God. They choose either some kind of material thing or another person. But the point is, the reason that it's that God didn't want Israel to have a king is because he wanted to be their king. He wanted to set up a system, and he wanted them to know and them to be able to see, no, no, I am your king, and I have judges that are tasked with enforcing my law and doing what I tell them to do, but ultimately, they serve me. I'm the king, and they're the ones that are charged with seeing that what I have told them to do gets carried out. That's why Israel was a theocracy. Now, it was still a theocracy after the king took place, but think about how many kings believed that it was their, within their power and authority to go above what God had commanded them to do and do evil. And, and one thing that is a common phrase that is repeated over and over again through the scripture is so-and-so was king, he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, usually it provides a couple of details, and then the scripture usually follows that up with, and he caused Israel to sin. See, th there were some really bad people, there were bad judges, there were bad priests, but they didn't have the level of power and authority over a person's life that a king did. And they had to be put in place because they had to have some kind of structure and some kind of government hierarchy. But ultimately, when it came to the day-to-day -day operations and how a person lived, a king just has so much more power over somebody than a judge, especially because he's the only king and there's not several judges or several people that can carry this out. 
it is a very fertile breeding ground for sin and corruption. And such individuals have the absolute power and authority over other people's lives to cause them to, or at least make it significantly harder for them to live a godly lifestyle. Priests and judges can do that too, but not nearly to the level that a king can. And this is the reason that God did not want them there. He wanted God to be, he wanted himself to be the king of, of our life. He, want, he deserves to be in that position. And it reminds me of something that Jesus said in John 15, 20, where he said, remember that a servant is not greater than his master. And the reason that he was making that point is he said, look, the way that they are persecuting me, they're going to do the same thing to you. Be aware of that. Remember that when all of this is going on, that when I'm out of here, they're going to persecute you too. And this is part of the reason that God says to Samuel, look, they haven't rejected you alone. What they've really done is they've rejected me. Because for all of Samuel's flaws, he did do what God asked him to do. He was God's emissary. He was his mouthpiece. He was doing his job. And the people rejected him anyway. They weren't really rejecting him. They were rejecting God. Now, if Samuel had not been doing what God told him to do, then this episode plays out very differently. Then all of a sudden they are rejecting Samuel. They're saying that Samuel's not the right man for the job, that he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing, but in this circumstance, God is making it very, very clear that what is actually going on here is that they've rejected him. And to us as modern-day Christians, this is something that is a goal we actually should aspire to, not getting rejected, because, you know, even though that's going to happen, it's not something that we're working towards. But what I'm talking about is the people that are going to reject us, if we're living the way that we're supposed to, if we're sharing the gospel the way that we're supposed to, then when they do reject us, they're not really rejecting us, they're rejecting God. A lot of people are going to do that. The majority of people are actually going to do that. The vast majority of people are not going to be saved, are going to reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's something that is guaranteed by the scriptures. However, we need to make sure that if they do that, that they're rejecting God, that we put ourselves in a right relationship with God the way Samuel did, so that if they do choose to not listen to our message, that they're not rejecting us, they're rejecting God. Then that's their problem. Then it's not us. At that point, we've done everything that we can, just like Samuel had in this situation. And you'll also notice that the reason that God explains this and the way that he does sort of illustrate it to Samuel so that he can better understand it is to remind them of Israel's history. Because Samuel's really upset about this. He's depressed. We saw that in our last reading, that the, the, the thing displeased Samuel. Samuel's really upset about this, and, and God's reminding him, he's like, look, they've rejected me since the beginning. I brought them out of Egypt. First thing they did, build an idol. And then they were wandering around and I was leading them through Israel to retake it. First thing they did, get into idolatry. This is a thing that continues to go on until this day in Israel. They've always done this. They've always rejected God, both as their God and their king. And God is saying, Samuel, there's nothing you could have done to change this. This is who they are. And it's something that is depressing <laughs> And it's a reality that we as Christians don't usually want to deal with, but sometimes we have to remember, and I don't think we need to adopt the attitude that, oh, well, if they reject us, that's just their problem, and, and there's nothing that I can do. No, there are some things that we need to do. There's a lot that we need to do to make sure we're in the same position as Samuel to where we're doing everything we can, and if they reject us, then they're just rejecting God, and that's on them, not us. But ultimately, we need to remember that the average person is going to do that. Just like Samuel needed to be reminded by God here, he's like, look, Samuel, this is who they are. They constantly reject me. And so if they reject us, then that's not something they haven't already done to Jesus Christ. The, the one perfect human that ever walked this earth was murdered for crimes he didn't commit. Do you really think that they're going to give us a fair hearing? Think about it that way. 
if we're not greater than our master, and that's a concept that God explained here to Samuel, then we have to remember the people are going to reject us, but ultimately they're rejecting the truth. Ultimately, they're rejecting what God has in store for them. And as much as it hurts, as much as it pains us to see people walk away from something that could be so life-changing and so wonderful for them, we have to remember that at a certain point, God hands them over to give them exactly what they ask for. Some people spend their whole lives basically rejecting God and saying to Him, no, we, we want something else to be king, whether it's postmodernism or sex or drugs or whatever else it is. We want something else to be our king. At a certain point, God is going to say, all right, have at it. You want to make money your king? Go ahead, follow it. And the horrible things that happen afterward, which God warns them about here in the next verse, all those things are going to come true, not because God's directly punishing them or, or God's just kind of smiting them for rejecting him, but because that's just the way that it happens. When you follow anything other than God, when you make anything other than God the center of your life, your life is not going to turn out very well. And the children of Israel are about to get a lesson in that firsthand. Whenever you replace, when you put anything other than God on the throne in your life, those results aren't good. No human being has the ability or the capacity, not even one as good as David, has the ability to replace God. Stay the course, friends. <laughs> So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning.